Hello Internet! Today I want to take a look at a lazy string parser. Um, what this is, is sort of a way to parse parts of a string in order, instead of parsing the entire string. Um, we're going to be using the yield keyword in C Sharp for this. Um, and there, there's some bunch of different use cases. Let's say you're trying to parse through a book, and you're trying to pull out each word in that book, and you want to see when the first X number of uh, words appear, or when this specific word occurs. Um, what you can do is actually use this so that you read effectively from the start of the book to wherever the first occurrence of, of your case is, with, and then you stop. It prevents you from reading through the rest of the book. Whereas typically if you use like string.split, what's going to end up happening is you're going to read the entire book and then parse through it and figure out what parts you actually cared about. Um, so this can save you a lot of time, especially with larger data sets, because you're not needed to parse through the whole thing. Um, if it's a rare occurrence, you still will, just because you might need to get to the end of the book, and then you've just done a bunch of extra work. But if it's common that you're going to see the case fairly normally, um, this can be a way to sort of detect that quickly and move on. Um, so I, I mentioned we were going to be using the yield keyword. This is sort of a really handy way to do this. Um, if you're familiar with Unity, it's, it's coroutines. Um, and the idea is yield creates a spot in your code that sort of saves the state. Um, so it's like a, a normal return statement in your code, but when you hit this return, that current state in that function is going to be saved. And the next time you invoke it, you're going to return to the line immediately after that return. Uh, which means that if you have an infinite loop, for example, and you keep yielding a new integer, you effectively just created an infinite list of integers. So what that might look like is if we want to do um, an infinite list of integers, so let's just do i enumerable of ints, uh, we'll just say infinite integers. Uh, this is just an example just to sort of uh, create a baseline for us. Um, we'll start at zero and just go up to i equals, we'll go to a thousand. It can go up to, what am I doing? <laughs> this is less than 1000. There we go. And we'll just do i plus plus. So this is going to increment i from zero to a thousand. So 0 to 999, because this is non-inclusive. And then we're going to yield, and then just do a normal return statement. So yield return i. And so what this is going to do is return i. So the first time we run through this loop, we're going to hit 0 and return 0. And then the next time we iterate through this, we'll, we'll increment i and return 1 and keep doing that until we exit our loop, or we stop looping in whatever is calling this. Um, why doesn't it like this? Couldn't be found. Let's import that. There we go. And then what we want to do is just do for each var uh, n in our set of infinite integers. And uh, we'll just take the first 10. Um, so take is a link statement. So it's going to take the first 10 occurrences. So we should get 0 through 9 in this case. And we're just going to print those out. So console write line. Um, we'll just do n. Ah, there we go. Um, so this is an interpolated string. This is not required. You could just do n, but this sort of does string things and we can add formatting. So, uh, yeah, wh whatever we want it there, we could add. Um, but this should be enough to kind of get us started. So let's just .NET run this and see what we get. Um, we should see hello world followed by this. I don't know why it's saying that. I need to save. Why? Oh, ha, this is in static. There we go. All right. Uh, the, the main vet method is static, so all of the functions we're calling need to be static unless we instantiate a class. So uh, we should do this. And we don't have link, so it's going to throw an error. And we'll just import system.link, which should give us access to that. Link is, again, just a whole bunch of C -sharp functions that do this sort of lazy evaluation. They're really useful for, for data management and stuff. Um, but here you go. Here is our infinite list, not, not infinite in this case, um, only up to 1,000, but list of integers that's using the yield statement. So instead of, instead of creating the list beforehand and returning a, a list with 1,000 elements, we're actually dynamically generating this. Um, so each time you invoke this, we're actually incrementing it and, and returning the next thing and sort of going in a loop instead of doing all of one thing and then all of another thing. This is what we're going to be doing to, to parse through our string. Um, so let's get started by just creating a class. 
So we'll just call this the string parser, I guess. Uh, and what we want is we want to parse through this thing. Um, so we're going to create a public. What do we want to do this? Let's just do public static i enumerable. And this is going to return strings, so collections of strings. Uh, and we just want to parse this. And so it's going to take in a string, which is like our book. And then this will be our content. And then a string or character. Let's just do a character that is going to be our delimiter. And so the delimiter is what's actually going to separate this. In this case, we're going to use spaces, um, but we can pass in anything we want. Um, so in this case, parse needs to go through our string and find all the words based off of, uh, based off of whatever has a, has a space in it. And so what we're trying to accomplish here is reading the string once. That's what we want to happen. We don't want to reparse the string multiple times or parse the entire thing. Um, one way we could do this is do return string dot split or content dot split actually content dot split uh, delimiter. And we're just going to do this now so that we can actually set up an example. Um, this should be identical to what we write, uh, but ours should work better on larger, larger amounts of data. Um, so what we're going to do here is get rid of this infinite integers thing. We do not need that. That was just an example. Um, instead, let's do a console.write line for this. Um, so hello world is going to be uh, thrown in. Let's do var content equals hello world of zero exclamation mark. Sure. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, so that is four, four words. We should get four different things. And so we'll do for each var uh, word in our content. Um, instead, we are actually going to go string parser dot parse and pass in our content and then just a space. Uh, it's expecting a character. That is a string. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, cool. So that is going to parse our thing. Now let's just print it out. So console write line. Again, again, this, this is a string, so we're just going to write word because we can. Uh, and if we run this, we should now see four words on each line or one word per line, four lines like this. And so what we're trying to do is duplicate this, but doing this with a yield statement. Um, so this is the, the short version. I recommend this if you have a small thing. Um, and keep in mind with computers, small is not like hundreds of things small is like thousands or millions or whatever of things. Or if you're just doing the thing a lot and you expect things to occur fairly frequently, um, it sort of, sort of depends. There's always that trade off between the most optimized code and the code that works. Um, sometimes just code that works is good enough. And if you're not running into bottlenecks, it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to spend time writing more code that you need to maintain. Um, so there, there's some decisions that have to happen here. But what we're going to do is create a string builder. So var builder. Do we want a builder? Uh, we probably don't actually. I think that that might just be a whole lot of a lot of extra time. Um, but we're going to create a word. So var word equals empty string. Uh, we're actually going to use string that empty for this. Um, I think that that's just a better thing to do than to do the uh, double quoted thing. Um, I don't actually know if that's true. It's just sort of a personal preference thing. Again, lots of decisions. You don't need to agree with all the ones I'm making. Um, so now we're going to iterate through this for each uh, character in content. We're going to iterate through this until we see the delimiter character. Um, so var if character is equal to delimiter then we want to break out of this. Um, so what we're going to do is return a word like this, yield return word. And then at the end, we can just say word equals the empty string. So string dot empty. And so this is going to reset it. Uh, if you don't like doing this, if you don't like resetting it afterwards, you can always store it in a temporary variable. So var result equals word. And we're going to return the result here and reset word before returning. 
Either of these should work. Again, we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, so if there's code after this, you should still execute it. Um, but you, you, if, you, if, that makes it, if that makes your code confusing, and a lot of times it will, um, typically having returns at, at some distinct endpoint makes more sense than like in the middle of your code, because that can be a little bit weird. Um, so this might be a more understandable way to phrase what we're trying to do. Um, so we have our result, we have our word, and we return the result, and then we continue on. Um, so what this is doing is returning the result after we've found the space character that's going to delimit the thing, and it's going to return the next one. Uh, the problem with this is if I put a space in here, we're going to hit the delimiter twice, which means we're going to actually return an empty string. And that actually probably isn't what we want. Um, there, there's some weird things with like double spacing after a period or something, in which case that would break your code. Um, you, would, you would start getting empty words spit out. Uh, and so what we can do is I'll add a little condition here. So if uh, word is not equal to string.empty, so if it's been set in some way, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're just going to continue on. Um, so it effectively becomes a no-op. If we see multiple spaces in a row, we react to the first one and then ignore the rest because nothing, the state hasn't changed. Um, then the next thing, we actually need to process the character. We're going to do word plus equals our character like this. Um, so there's no delimiter here. Um, so this is just going to append our character onto the word. Um, you could use a string builder here. I am... Not sure if that makes sense. We're only probably going to be handling a few characters each time. And so I'm not sure what the benefit is there. I'm not sure if there is one or isn't one. I, it's just it's just not something I know. Um, so we're, we're going to do this because this is easier. Um, and that, that's that. Uh, and that's pretty much everything, I think. Um, so if we, should, if we run this, we should still see four lines. Or I screwed something up and it doesn't work. Hello world of, and we don't get a zero. Why not? If word is not equal to the string dot empty, um, what? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why this would happen, actually. Because we, so we should see this, the second space, we should see this. Wait, that doesn't make sense either. Um, we're just skipping the last word entirely. Um, why? Oh, I know why. We don't get a delimiter at the end of this. So what we need at the very end is a yield return uh, word. And that should catch our final word. So if we do this like so. Uh, hello world of zero, and we get all four of them. And you'll notice we do not get that extra space. Uh, and this actually it should be better even than if we do uh, this. We're just going to copy this and do uh, content dot split split by this. Uh, we actually with the split, it will be less smart. So we should actually see a space here like this. Um, so you again, you can tweak this, you can do whatever you want. Um, but the cool thing is we can actually parse parts of this. So I'm, like I was using take before, we can do that here and only grab the first two words that occur in this string. Um, so if I, I'm going to comment this out just so we don't get confused and run this and we should just see hello world as part of this like that. Um, so you, you, you can play with this a little bit more. And this prevents us if we had a full book and we just wanted the first two words. This would still work uh, and would be relatively quick. We'd still have this massive string in memory that we had to move around. Um, but we wouldn't need to worry about parsing the entire thing and going through the entire string, looking through every single word if we just wanted the first two. This avoids that. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's the entire, entire concept here. Um, hopefully this is useful. I have a video that goes in depth on yield a little bit more and has some more examples on that. Um, but this seemed like a fun example. Um, so I figured we'd, we'd cover it here. Um, if you have questions or you, you want to learn more, um, consider joining our Discord. There's a link in the description. Um, there's a bunch of people there that can help you out with either new things that you're trying to learn or if you have something you want to share, some cool project or something, um, there's a space for that as well. Um, but other than that, I will leave it here. Um, so I will see you in the next video. So until then, 
the internet.